When I introduced you to the periodic table, I said that the rows were called periods. And this is because there was a repeating pattern that repeated periodically. Well, it's time to start talking about what those patterns are. It's so the law of periodicity, that when you line up the, the elements on the periodic table in increasing atomic number, there's a repeating trends or repeating patterns. So remember that increasing atomic number increases the nuclear charge and the number of electrons. But really, we're going to talk a little bit to start off about that nuclear charge. There are four periodic trends, four periodic laws that you need to know. They are atomic radius, ionic radius, ionization energy, and electronegativity. Before we start talking about them, please know this, that these are trends and not explanations. These are an observation of things that happen, but not an explanation of why they happen. My hope is to teach you some of the explanation of why these things happen. Because you will be fine on a multiple choice test of saying, oh, atomic radius decreases from left to right. But if you can't tell me why it decreases on a free response, that's where you're going to run into some trouble. So remember, a trend is not an explanation. Never say, if I ask why is this one smaller than that one, and you say because atomic radius decreases from left to right, that is not an explanation. That is an observation of a trend. So let's talk about some reasons why things happen. So the nuclear charge increases with each proton you add to the nucleus. The nuclear charge becomes more and more positive which will attract electrons with much, much, much greater uh, attraction uh, for each proton you put in. This is called the effective nuclear charge. And it's abbreviated ZEF, capital Z with a subscript EFF for effective. So anytime we go from left to right across the periodic table and we need to explain a trend, we most likely will reference back to the effective nuclear charge. Because as you move from left to right, the only thing that's increasing is the number of protons. While there is an increase in the number of electrons in neutral atoms, it is the number of protons that are really giving us that big change between one element and the next. If we move from top to bottom down the periodic table, we have an increase in the number of shells of electrons around the nucleus. This is called the principal quantum number, or an increase in the quantum number. The more electrons you have around the nucleus, the more those electrons will shield that nucleus from reacting or interacting or attracting other electrons. There's a shielding effect. So principal quantum number. Anytime we go from top to bottom, I'll most likely will reference the number of shells, the quantum number around the nucleus. And if there's any, ever any sort of variation or difference from a pattern, it typically is derived from electron pair or electron-electron repulsion. Since all electrons are negative, they are going to repel one another. They don't want to be next to one another. And I use again want in quotation marks. You should avoid the use you should not anthropomorphize uh, inanimate objects in a science class. So they are not, they're not attracted to one another, they will repel one another. And this will be, will play a part anytime there's a big difference or a, a variation from a trend. You're not responsible for explaining variations from trends. You are, however, responsible for explaining the overall trend and why it occurs. So the first trend we'll talk about is atomic radius. As you move from left to right across the periodic table, atomic radius decreases. This is because the, principal, the effective nuclear charge, the ZEF, is increasing. I have more protons in the nucleus that are pulling those electrons closer and closer towards the nucleus. Notice that there is no transition metals here. Transition metals typically play by the rules of a trend with a lot of variation and therefore for most of this discussion I will not discuss p uh, transition metals. So the analogy I use when talking about atomic radius or the radius of any atom is if we're all holding down the Snoopy balloon at the Macy's Day Parade 
Snoopy represents all the electrons, and us and the ground represent the nucleus. If there are only a couple of us holding on to Snoopy, Snoopy's going to be really far away from the ground. He might even be pulling us up a bit. If there are a lot of us, if the whole class gets in and starts pulling down on Snoopy, he's going to get closer to the ground. So the greater the nuclear charge, the closer electrons get to the nucleus, the smaller the radius. As you go from top to bottom, atomic radius increases because there's more and more shells around the nucleus. In our Snoopy example, this would be like if we added Woodstock to Snoopy, or if we added Charlie Brown. There would now be more that we have to hold down, so we would have a greater radius. There'd be a greater distance from us to the bottom of the balloons. Remember that ions will gain or lose electrons to become more like noble gases, become more stable. If you lose electrons, you become positive. If you gain them, you become negative. So groups 1, 2, and 3 will lose electrons and get a positive 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Groups 16, 15, 16, and 17 will gain electrons, getting a minus 3, minus 2, and minus 1, respectively. If you gain electrons, this would be like if we took Snoopy and we filled him with more helium. He's going to rise further away. We have less, we have the same amount of us pulling him down, but now there's more of him to pull down. So if you became a negative ion, like what happens to nonmetals, your ionic radius is going to increase. So fluorine, very small, its ion is much bigger than its neutral counterpart. The more electrons you gain, the bigger you become. Carbon can gain up to four electrons and therefore can be massive. If you lose electrons, this would be like if we let some air out of Snoopy. Aluminum, when it's neutral, is rather small. But when, al uh, sorry, aluminum when it's neutral is small, but when it loses three electrons, those electrons leave, now there's less electron repulsion, those electrons can move closer into the nucleus because the zeth is the same. So notice how small this ion is compared to its neutral counterpart. Sodium, notice how small this ion is compared to its neutral counterpart. So as you move from left to right across the periodic table, atomic radius decreases, ionic radius decreases until you get to nonmetals, and then it skyrockets and then decreases again. As you move from top to bottom, though, it's the same as atomic radius. You have more shells around the nucleus, and therefore the atomic and ionic radius both increase as you move down the periodic table. The amount of energy it takes to remove one of the electrons from an atom in its gaseous state is called its first ionization energy. Now metals all form cations, but form positive ions. They give up electrons. And they do so rather willingly, in quotes, because it's more ele electrically, st it's more stable for them to do so. So it's no surprise that metals have very low first ionization energies. It does not take a great deal of, of energy to remove an electron from a metal. When you reach nonmetals, though, there's a drastic increase in ionization energy because nonmetals would be more interested, would become more stable if they gained electrons. Taking one away sets them further away from that goal of being stable. Same with noble gases. Noble gases are stable. It's going to take a great deal of energy to make them unstable, and therefore noble gases have some of the highest ionization energies. As you move from left to right across the periodic table, first ionization energy increases. As you move down the periodic table, though, 
there's a decrease in ionization energy because those electrons are further from the nucleus and have more energy to begin with. So it doesn't take nearly as much to pull electrons that are far from the nucleus as it does to pull electrons that are really, really, really close. This would be fluorine. Look how close that is. It's really high. Lastly, electronegativity. How well an atom shares its electrons with another atom is its electronegativity. And it's based on the attraction of the electrons for that atom's particular nuclei. It's a scale from 0 to 4, with 4 being the highest and 0 being the least. 4 means an atom shares its electrons almost not at all. And 0 means that atom doesn't share, or that atom doesn't even realize that it's sharing, because it has 0 in negativity. Noble gases are a zero because they never react with anything, and, uh, well, they rarely react with anything, and therefore are not included on this chart, on this system. So here we have the electronegativities of uh, all the elements on the periodic table with the exception of the actinide and lanthanide series. Oh, wait, nope, those are given to you too. The smaller the atom, the closer the electrons can be to the nucleus. The closer they are to the nucleus, the smaller the atom, the closer the electrons can get to the nucleus, the more attracted they will be to it. So our smallest atoms, fluorine, have the highest electronegativity, while our largest elements, our largest atoms, have the lowest electronegativity because there's a great deal of shielding around their nucleus. There's not a lot of attraction of the electrons on the outside, those involved in a bond, for that nucleus. Personally, the way I remember electronegativity is that fluorine's the worst with oxygen and nitrogen in a close second. And as you move further away from fluorine, things become less and less electronegative. So if I was ever asked which is more electronegative, germanium or arsenic, I would go, okay, fluorine's here, germanium's the furthest away, so it's the loser. It's the least electronegative, arsenic's the most. The only freak and oddball to that is hydrogen, but rarely, rarely, rarely are you asked to discuss the difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and something else. And those are your periodic trends or the law of periodicity.